What is up, goons, gangsters, and gamers? It's your boy, The Good Tonight, and, uh, welcome to the end of 2020. Allegedly. Um, well, they're still determining a uh, name for the uh, 13th month. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll actually get into 2021. And not 2020 New Game Plus or any of the crazy shenanigans. I had quite enough of this year. To be honest, kind of, uh, kind of miss not wearing a mask everywhere, although I do have a Gucci mask to wear, so that's pretty awesome. So, end of 2020, I like to do the um, end of year sort of uh, gear reviews, especially com com uh, blah, compare that to where we started in the year, where we're at now, and sometimes, uh, well, college is out of the way. That's the really big thing I wanted to get to with college done, finally start focusing on a lot more physical fitness and not worrying about homework and papers and assignments and all that dumb stuff. So, things that haven't changed too much, we're still wearing Cry G3s, almost always wearing Cry G3s. Pretty fantastic. I know the G4s came out, haven't really had time to test anything with them or any of that crazy stuff, but, you know, Cry G3s, we'll start baseline and we'll do our little show and tell here, and, uh, yeah, we'll move on for where we're planning to go from there. So, Cry G3s, we do have a cool, uh, Plague EDC patch. These patches are subject to change. I do like the, uh, was it the eye test one me and my buddy made back when we were doing lots of physical fitness instruction and stuff. Uh, weapons grade waifus. Always good. Got stuff to uh, support there. Uh, honorable shout out to my good buddy uh, Takamine's on at Zacom Works. Always making good stuff. Like to show off his, his things. Never get the opportunity. So, Starting off, what are, what's the big thing we changed? Well, we're still running the Solomons for the uh, boots. We're still running G3s. We do have a new belt, and the belt I've been wanting to do a video on for a while. I haven't had a lot of, an oppor a lot of opportunities to really uh, film reviews, because college only recently ended. I've been on a huge decompression, de-stress, get rid of that nonsense sort of ordeal. So we'll start. We'll work our way up, starting with our belt. Um, key thing is we're moving over from the uh, Ronin Tactics belt for a myriad of reasons that I'll cover in that review, but we're moving over to the uh, tier, tier belt, so we got our tier belt here, it's a bit, uh, not really flimsy, it's not as stiff per se, I don't want to use the word flaccid because people in the comments always have a blast when I use that word, but the tier tactical belt, which likes to keep their logos upside down for reasons unbeknownst to me, has a cool feature, not only does it have the uh, cool inner belt setup that you can get here, that really spiky uh, velcro to help it latch onto, but also comes with a uh, padded inner liner, so when you're sleeping in your silkies, like a true American, <laughs> your American flag silkies, or even just your green silkies, taking your nap in those and there's a bump in the night, you can grab your padded belt here, slap that over your silkies, and you got access to all your essentials, so to speak. But Wearing it with our uh, G3s, and that's so that you can actually just uh, strip this away, like so. That's really comfortable, by the way, which is part of the huge reason I definitely recommend tier belts. This thing weighs a lot less than the Ronin belt, and uh, yeah, much like previously, the Velcro is set up in a different pattern, so we don't have the soft Velcro on the inside, we got the uh, stiff, pointy Velcro, but that means the outside is less likely to do damage to our uniform or any equipment that it comes into contact with. Secure our leg strap, we got our basic. Uh, set up here that we've been running for a hot minute. We've improved the holster to the red dot sight one. We don't have the red dot sight yet. Work in progress, and we got our little Surefire, was it the XC1 light here on the handgun. We're not really carrying, covering the handgun stuff today, per se, or any of the rifle components. That's all stuff coming in the future that we're going to be working on in 2021. The biggest upgrade we want to do is we do want to get a uh, red dot sight going up on our handgun because it, it makes shooting a lot easier. Airsoft-wise, not a big deal, but our ultimate goal is to get stateside and get the uh, the real steel sort of flying, so we're trying to get everything set up with that mentality in mind, so we got our holster with the red dot sight pending light in place, got our Coyote Tactical Solutions IFAC, got our super sexy dump pouch from, uh, what was it, the MDOM one? Yeah, the MDOM dump pouch, Aztec mag. We do have replacement uh, new mags in the way as well. We're going to be getting some uh, uh, Safari Land mag holsters, but the uh, Blade Tech's pretty Gucci. And all that holds together, we got our... <laughs> I like the uh, those little Velcro hookup, or not Velcro, but uh, this padded, not padded, material fabric 
Someone please help me. <laughs> My mind's everywhere. We got this fabric now for our uh, personal retention lanyard, which, I mean, we're not going to be getting a ton of vehicles. The vehicles we're getting in probably aren't going to roll over or flip or anything, but nice thing to have there. Is it necessary? Not necessarily. I could, I could take it off. Just mount my gloves on here or something crazy like that. So you got a belt. Belt's a key component. So uh, up next, because we started from the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> we're gonna we got our M Dom little uh, fanny pack with the gloves on there that just mounts around the belt and hangs out down here around the uh, part. So that gives us a little bit of extra access to things we might may or may not need. We can throw all of our medical supplies in here. Basic stuff. Simple, easy peasy to the point. And we do got our pig gloves. I do like the alphas, because the added padding is nice, but if we're just gonna be doing a lot of shooting, not a lot of crazy stuff, then uh, there's also the deltas to go lighter weight. Actually, yeah, we're gonna slap that on, why not? We went through all the effort to pull it out. <laughs> you might as well. So I do like this because of how it can be combined. I mean, I could find a system to get it clipped into place or something crazy, but push that down there, we throw a light or any small material items we need in there. Gloves hang out off on the side, and we got all of our stuff there. This is a bit higher than I'm used to. That's probably because I don't have it all the way around the belt or whatnot. But yes, it's comfy. It's got the nice little angled setup, so that's all nice and out of the way. Do I have both gloves? I have my deltas on here too. That's why this felt so bulky. Yes, we got all our gloves there. So, a lot of gloves. Four gloves, two hands. Bit of a uh, supply and demand problem. But for the right now, we're just going to take that off. It's comfy enough, but we don't really need it. Mostly using it to hold onto my gloves and small components and stuff. I should put my, uh, what should I call it? I'm not even wearing that. The, uh, ch -ch 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 Garmin. I don't even have maps. I got grid coordinates and no maps. Bit of a, bit of a problem there. So, we do have our plate carrying our stuff. That's going to be the next big thing. We do have, were we wearing a, uh, actual sort of like fabric blouse, not the, uh, underneath your uh, plate carrier setup. We do got a cool thing. I, this just came in the mail a few days ago, mind you. The, uh, was it? The Eagle split chest, like multi-purpose, multi-mission chest rig. This is a cool little thing my good buddy sent me. It is a bit dated. It's cool Eagle, Eagle technology, but we're gonna have to do a lot of uh, time and effort and get some time under the uh, foot and stuff here to actually figure out how we're gonna want this set up and whatnot. There's room for extra stuff on the sides. A 3x3 little pal set up. I'll figure out what I want to throw on there. But what, considering how often me and my uh, my good buddy, Alex Bra, go out into the uh, woods and the uh, wildlife having a simple chest rig to throw things in. It's pretty cool. It's going to be great for all that stuff. And of course, we're going to be doing... I don't do a lot of crazy outdoor, like, long distance stuff because Okinawa is kind of a tiny island. But were we to wear the chest rig... It's important to have a decent little pack to go with it. This isn't none of this stuff is set up the way I need it to. I don't do I don't do the long range outdoor stuff. Okay, I just like to wear the armor and go pew pew. All right, so we got a cool setup there. I'm gonna be working with all that stuff. So um, shirt wise, we do got our G3 combat shirt going on here. But alternative options we do have is um, I mean we come from a very marine background, so having access to Marpat. It's just, it's just a cool uniform. It blends in better with the woodland. It gives us our more marine-based Escape from Tarkov setup instead of that army UCP stuff they got going on there. So that's cool. Um, plate carrier-wise, we're still running the SPC, although we've made a lot of improvements to it, most notably the front uh, panel with all the, uh, the blue speed 10, the 10 speed mag pouches. Um, and also the addition of the Faro Concepts older generation uh, back panel. Um, with back panels, I see a lot of people struggle with this. Again, we're going to cover this in a future video. But back panels, you need a thing called friends to use them. You're not going to be taking off your plate here to get access to the stuff in there all the time. This one's relatively empty. I think I just have my balacalva in there. Yeah, we got... Ooh, I got a little speedy loader in there. That's cool. Mostly our balacalvas in there. You would put actual useful things in there, but uh, that's just there as like a placeholder. You get a bit of fill out. So we're gonna throw this on real quick. Always a comfortable thing to wear. I don't have the uh, radio set up right now. We're not doing too many radio things as of late. Uh, so we'll get the radio set up later. I'm trying to get, change out the PTT. I got the shears in here right now, but pop that up. 
slide that in, uh, slide that one in, and clip that down. So plate carrier doesn't interfere with our belt mounted equipment. Everything's super comfy and cool. We've got three mags up here, we can change out our loadout, but for the most part we're trying to keep this relatively lightweight. If we don't have an immediate need for it, then there's no point. Back pedal comes in handy when there's more people, but right now being just me filming, I just get to use it to be like, oh hey, this covers the exposed parts of the plate. Because, ah, uh, Grand Thumb said the sun will, uh, it'll, it'll eat through your plates and it's bad. Plates are fine, but we do have that covering on there. If nothing else, it looks cool, and um, if there's anything that I've learned from the internet is that training, all that stuff, you just gotta look cool on the Instagram. That's why you see people, they whip out their piece and they go, blam, 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 and they got their shot timer, my shot timer's in there, and they go, blam, 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 and they go, yeah, and they show you the time, and they never show you the targets. It activates the almonds, don't it, so. Play care hasn't changed a whole lot. We'll throw in our radio. We got our access to our radio stuff there. We can do our comms. We're going to connect that to our headset. Up next, as far as getting too... Oh, yeah, actually, we got to cover this first. Before we start getting too far, we do still have our Tactical Assault Gear uh, Combat Sustainment Pack. This is what you actually do have access to when you're running around without anything else. I got my hydration in there. It's empty right now because we're not doing anything too crazy, but... Were we going to be doing stuff that would require sustainment in combat, then being able to throw this boyo on here. I got a panel in there that I keep it stiff. That's going to sit a little bit higher up than usual. And this is all out of the way. And we're comfy and we're still going. We're doing our stuff. We're doing our patrols. We're moving about. Having a good time. And now we have access to water. Three liters, to be exact. And three liters of water will go pretty far away. Warring armor, over extended, extended periods of times, Without water is bad juju. Don't do don't do it. Um, with the uh, back panel, that's great access if you need people to get you. You're up on a door and you're like, hey, get a uh, flashbang ready. We're gonna breach into here. Get a breaching charge of the lower panel. Get whatever you need. Claymore stuff like that. Get that set up over here. And then your teammate, who is not me, because I'm the guy with the pack on. He comes up behind you and he's like, all right, cool. We're gonna get in here, we're gonna get that flashbang ready, we're gonna set up that claymore over here. Well, holding the flash, you know, you know, like you do, and then just, and then, psh, and then da 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 da. You, you, you need another drill. Hopefully. Allegedly, in theory. So, this we actually do have access to, so if we're out doing stuff on patrol and things, we go, hey, cool. Let's, um, take a break here. We can take this off and get immediately access, we can swap, we can make sure we have all our mags set up, we got a multi-tool if something starts going down, extra batteries in case our uh, optics start to die or something crazy, or we're getting ready to do a crazy raid, and your amp's headphone is going beep, 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 beep. It's actually good, beep, 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 you get the idea. We can swap out the batteries on those real quick and get everything ready. And most importantly, this also doubles as a pillow if you get a little sleepy. <laughs> Everyone gets a half hour nap before you gotta raid a building like you do. I love this pack. I honestly will never get rid of this pack, even as it gets uh, farther outdated. So, love me that pack. Um, headgear wise, headgear wise, things start to get a little crazy because there's a lot of different things you can do and a lot of different reasons for it. So, first and foremost, we got our M50 gas mask, thing that's been around for a good number of years, and we got a little voice amplifier on there. So, we can take this. Put that boy on. Hey, man, you can actually yell at people and sound like a robot. You're like, hey, I'm the And Space Marine charge, all sorts of stuff. Uh, the lens is protective. We got full fuel, safe, uh, a lot of safety stuff going on. We can breathe. And so instead of throwing CS gas out, we're going to be protected from that and all that nastiness, so. Ugh. Really cool mask. Always love this. And regardless of what we're doing, we could do all sorts of crazy stuff. If we're going to be doing any rifle drills, um, lasers are good. IR lasers, particularly at nighttime, and then uh, green lasers for the day if you can't get a good seal. But alternatively, if you're trying to get access to that EOTech, you just pop off that right filter, and now you got a lot more space, particularly if you're working with Unity risers and stuff that we'll be covering here in a second. All right, so moving on. Headgear wise, things, like I said, they get pretty crazy because we do have our helmet. 
We're not, uh, we're not doing a lot of nod stuff. I was dicking around with, uh, some basic Gen 1, uh, what are they, the, uh, ooh, we got our chin strap extender for use with the gas mask, so it doesn't go fly, or our helmet doesn't go flying off while we're doing stuff there. Let's just clip that down standard right now. Um, headgear-wise, we do have amps, and as of recently, these decided they're going to work again, so that was pretty cool. Let me turn them on real quick. They still work! Alright, so... I've been doing a review on these, there's the low battery warning right there, I've been doing a review on these for the longest time, and to make things complicated, shortly after I filmed the review, these started acting up, having problems, there's like a, uh, I've seen people posting uh, reviews and stuff and talking about, well not necessarily reviews, but posting uh, issues they've been having with them, they have to send them out to Opscore to get them fixed up, key issue is there's like a mechanical switch, or whatever you want to call it, in the left side, and that basically controls power on, power off but it gets stuck. So if it gets stuck on on, even when you turn them off, they'll power down, but they're gonna drain out the batteries, which is a big issue. If they get stuck in the off position, then no matter what you're doing with the batteries, they won't turn on. And while you're still not gonna hear the gun go pop, 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 and you know, go deafen you, you're not gonna hear people really talking to you unless they're using the uh, comms either. So that's, that's been a bit of a issue there, but these are objectively like the most sexy headgear out there, headgear on the market right now. And they also got the little ear pods if you want that extra protection. And also using that as a near field magnetic stuff going on so you can still hear better and have better ear protection. So cool. So these are nice. We got um, these set up for use with the. Uh, yeah. Assuming we're not doing anything too crazy, we can just mount these up with the step and visor, which is, oh, absolutely. Actually, the little seal on the side is falling apart. Uh, you know, we're just going to pop those off real quick because I don't feel like fixing it. And this is your super lightweight edition for setting it up. This is how I'd preferably run it if we're just doing uh, Marine Corps things. Apparently the Army wasn't as fond on the step and visor as the Marine Corps was. If you ask me, I like it. I think it's pretty fantastic. Got your eye protection, protection from the sun. Things are going to hit you in the eye and you can also jump out of planes with it. We're not going to be doing a lot of uh, jumping out of planes, so we'll just like T-pose, or we'll run around like this and make plane noises. <laughs> Preferably not jumping out of planes, but if we have to, get in a plane, or a helicopter or anything, we got this to work with, so... No real concerns there. Gas mask-wise, you can't see really below, so you got to have a solid uh, idea of your gear, which you should have anyway, but you're not going to be able to like look down at your magazines or handgun or anything crazy with the gas mask on. This is a bit easier. This is kind of how I do a uh, more realistic setup. And if we're doing a lot of shooting, we have the Soder uh, Special Operations Tactical Respirator, also from Gentex. We do have the little art uh, dovetail clips, so we can mount that over all this and clip it over the headset. And be able to breathe. Move that down there. Be able to breathe just fine, have that over there, give us protection from our training. This is not a gear training object we can use to help keep us safe and let's breathe. And as far as this microphone, microphone comes out. Let me plug in the lower microphone part here, that goes in there, and we can still use our comms just fine, so. Fantastic option. Training-wise, make sure we're not getting lead in our body and all that nastiness. Gas mask, in more realistic events, then there's going to be like gas and debris and nastiness in the air. And then just the straight-up lens when we're doing a straight-up basic operation stuff, we're not expecting to do too much crazy shooting. Now, in addition to all that cool stuff, I really like the way that this pops up and out of the way. I really just love these. I know the army didn't care for them. It's mostly like Marines still using them, but <laughs> there you go. So in addition, if we are doing training with sim rounds, we're going to want those little uh, visor connector stuff. We do have the step in visor. Or not the step. It's been a long, long year, guys. <laughs> we got the, oh no, the uh, force on force mandible. And this is just going to bolt into here. We don't need the amps with it. The uh, sim rounds are quieter. And this also gives you a little bit of ear protection, but mostly protecting your nose and teeth. And then uh, a bit of protection for the cheeks and the jawbone with the foam inserts and stuff. So this is a cool little addition. I like it because it's easy. These just mount into the rails there. And it'll also give you, in a realistic situation, a little bit of uh, impact protection in case someone's coming at you with a big stick. Or <laughs> you insensitively enrage the wrong group and they happen to have that twisted tea can it might help it's probably not going to save you but it's better than taking the hit straight to the face so. 
cool little thing and as you'll notice with these these also can mount into those little step and visor bits and you'll be better protected from there i like this thing this is nice and it also has that really cool futuristic feel to it if nothing else and if you mount it just right you can actually keep your uh what do you call it? your amps on and be relatively safe not just gonna mount up like this you'd be like bah that low battery's warning is still going off, but I think switching out the battery is the big thing that hits the uh, electronic switch and causes me problems. At some point, though, Gentex may reply to my email. It's only been three, four months since I've sent it to Opscore, and they haven't gotten back to me about fixing these, but I have heard stories of people getting theirs fixed. Um, now let's go ahead and turn these off real quick. Do-do-do. Yeah, pop those open, everything's looking pretty cash money. So, our helmet is the uh, Opscore Maritime. I forgot to mention that. It is ballistic. And I've seen a lot of the uh, night vision crowd really bashing on ballistic helmets. So I figured we'll just take a short a little minute here and mention that uh, ballistic helmets, particularly the Opscore, I know they're making lightweight, lighter weight ballistic ones with the new SF one. This is more of the old school Opscore Maritime, which I mean, it's still relatively comfortable. I'm not having crazy neck pain. But again, I'm running like a really basic Russian Gen 1 monocular, which isn't great, but better than not seeing it all. But with ballistic helmets and night vision in general, the big thing the uh, night vision crowds gain into that I'm going to cover right now before I forget later is they like to go on with the night vision as a superpower. Yeah, being able to see in the dark, especially in the newer Gen 3s, seeing in the dark with the old IR flashlight, being able to blast people who can't even see you because you're invisible. Great! Fantastic, and a lot of people go, oh, just get a bump helmet because they're not even going to see you coming, you have that special power, your magic power of night vision, and everything's great, so, um, the thing is, that I see completely neglected a lot, and people usually go, oh, you spent how much money on a ballistic helmet when you could have got a bump? The thing is, the world has this thing called a day and night cycles, and during the day, particularly clear days, no clouds, sun's straight out in the sky, causing all sorts of trouble like it does, and you're not wearing your shades, night vision kind of becomes irrelevant. So, if Batty McGoo is coming at you and they're going pop, pop, pop in the middle of the day, you can't go, oh, well, it's 1, it's 1 p.m., um, it's pretty bright out, my bump helmet's not really going to protect me, so uh, I'm just going to just gonna wait this out, and when it gets dark, I'll, I'll go after them. Not always going to be an option. Preferably, but not always. Additionally, a lot of the things people go on about with ballistic helmets is that they're rated for fragmentation and uh, small handgun calibers and stuff, and that is, that's true. The official rating goes up to that far, and um, realistically, as you see in a lot of the real world scenarios with people pulling out 7.62 rounds from their helmet and stuff occasionally, is that they can save you from rifle fire. Can! Not guaranteed! possible and a lot of the time with the lower back face deformation from op score you know not having the round go through your head and have you drink it was like oh, if you get hit in the head you're gonna drink through a straw not always true lots of people even wearing the old school like ACHs the Mitch helmets and stuff they'll take around to the there's one video of a dude who takes around to the head drops over backwards terrorist yelling oh hey God is great in a foreign language according to the uh, news media as they like to word it it's all the Akbar in reality but you know <laughs> dude takes a round to the dome, they're cheering, dude gets back up. Mind you, this sniper isn't that great, so it's a relatively short distance shot, which means the round should have more power behind it. Dude gets domed, gets right back up, and gets out of the line of sight. And starts trying to look around for the shooter, radio it in, people are looking for him and stuff, but... Dude survived. Survived a round. Probably wouldn't have been as okay with a bump helmet, but it's just really important to emphasize. A lot of things are rated to a very minimum setting, but will generally protect to a greater situation, although not guaranteed 100%. Ultimately, don't get shot in the head. <laughs> but ballistic helmets are ultimately pretty fantastic. I don't have anything personally against pump helmets. They're great, especially if you're running night vision and doing all that cool stuff, or you're not really expecting a lot of con contact and stuff, especially compared to wearing just like your little boonie cap. But in a lot of situations, a ballistic helmet can go a long way. And they're so much lighter than they used to be, I can comfortably wear this with the way I got it set up for hours on end and not have the problems because, my god, it's crazy how much of a difference like a decade will make. Because a decade ago, with the older gear, yeah, those helmets, those helmets are heavy, the padding sucked, the chin straps were pretty bad, 
Although I guess they were better because we were like still getting into the four point setup as opposed to the old school two point chin strap. So technology has come a long way. And for someone who's already got all sorts of back problems, like yo boy, I hit my <laughs> I hit my mic. Someone who's got all sorts of back problems already, like your boy. You know, even the SPC, the SPC is a little bit of a support here compared to the JPC goes a long way because I can wear this longer without back pain and shoulder pain and all that crazy stuff. But even in a younger generation sort of sense, being able to avoid that back pain from the get-go will go a long way in improving your overall quality of life. So, I'm, I haven't really thrown all my gear in a long, way too long. I've been so focused on college. And now it's all about PT, getting back into, getting rid of all this extra trimming the fat, so to speak. We trim the fat out of all of our gear. We have a lot of fat trimming to do with our uh, physical body. You know, the uh, most important thing, the part that all this gear is trying to protect to begin with. So, um, further improvements we're still working on rifle-wise. We got our uh, sling set pretty good. We do have uh, Knights Armament Company's front and rear sights coming in. Our EOTech has its Unity Riser. It is super easy to use with a gas mask or uh, what should we call it? The force on force mandible, all that cool stuff. LMT B5 stock. We can throw batteries in there if I don't really want to rattle or anything crazy. This side's going to get replaced when we get the irons in. And the biggest thing that I really want to do is we're going to get this light swapped out with a surefire and actually get that mounted off on the side. We'll throw a tap switch on the back so we can actually mount the light up to that and get access from it back here. And then we're really just missing the laser box. And I've been looking, there's a bunch of different ones. I know the uh, lots of people are advocating for the D-Ball, particularly the I-2. However, given the price range of the D-Ball and comparing that to the fact that you can get like a PEC-15, probably get one of those. We'll definitely get like a replica version in the meantime, just so I can get everything set up so I can get that Pelican case that's in the corner that you can't see all set up and ready to go. So we can actually get the rifle in there. So when we go stateside and we move to the real version, that's only going to be like an inch longer the barrel because 11.5 is superior to the 10.3 Mark 18 setup or whatever you're using. That's going to be like the real swap out we're going to be doing and everything else is going to be preferably one-to-one. -one, and this will fit neatly in the box like the Airsoft model of holding now does. Because Japan! <laughs> so we'll get that. Not sure if I, we'll definitely get a PEC-15 up on this. And then I suppose the absolute last thing we're really going to need is the uh, G33 magnifier and the flip to center uh, unity adapter. And with that, the rifle will be complete. The gear is complete. We get the rifle complete. Add that uh, red dot sight. We'll have the uh, handgun complete. And then we'll never need to buy anything ever again. Well, I guess like food and stuff, maybe protein shakes. Vegetables. Eat your vegetables, kids. Very <laughs> important. But yeah, so everything's looking pretty cash money and everything is coming up Millhouse. So, if you guys, I guess there's really not that many questions to have. We covered like a lot of the tactical gear. We do have some of the uh, civilian gear set up if you're just doing more of the civilian setup, which is going to be far more logical. Because, in all honesty, this is probably going to get some range use, maybe get to the tactical games. Mostly look cool on the gram, but. Like, civilian-wise, the most important things we really got to worry about is our immediate casualty care IFAC, because, you know, not bleeding to death is considered cash money. We got a Raven concealment holster, so that when we do need to move this, we can just slap that in there. Red dot side will be out of the way. Throw that down on there, so. Cool stuff. And that's basically the only two things you really need to carry for everything to be cash money in life, so. If you got any questions, feel free, hit me up. I'll answer them to the best of my ability. We got some pretty cool stuff going on here. And uh, hopefully we'll be we'll have the actual time to get all that essential training. The training is actually really important. Get your training, as much training as you can, as often as you can. I know ammo prices are out of control. A lot of people are supplementing with gas blowback airsoft state side wise. But again, Japan. I mean, the real stuff is a bit of a pain, so we're going to be running the uh, airsoft as low as we can. We will preferably, assuming this whole pandemic comes under control next year, we'll get stateside. We'll get some real shooting in. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what uh, what comes of everything. So, cheers, everyone. Stay chivalrous. And uh, stay Gucci. And uh, remember, all the gear in the world only goes so far if you're not in good shape. So, work out frequently, often. As hard as you can, because something about sweating now, less bleeding later, however the expression goes. I'm going to go watch 300. Cheers, guys. See ya. Peace.